Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tanel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-6. Our heroes have now formed a partnership and have opted to adventure together. Despite their different moral compasses, the party has agreed to make amends to those they have wronged since they had arrived in town earlier that day. They first opted to pay back the kind waitress at the repository of Ruination Tavern, which is where we catch up to them now. Uh, so, as you see, um, the entire incident was simply a case of a, um, misunderstanding, uh, mumbled Sister Elaine. The barmaid's mood was not enticed by the Reverend Daughter's discord, and she stood with her arms crossed in front of her. An uncomfortable silence fell over the group, with the only noise being the bartender sweeping up broken glassware from the floor. The party looked up at each other, and Cabe Silvertongue cleared his throat and nodded at the cleric. Startled, Elaine pulled forth the leather pouch the group had been given by Johan the Lone Shark. And <coughs> we would <coughs> like to uh, <coughs> pay you for your troubles, the bard continued. The woman exclaimed, and... He dumped the coins into her hand as she began to finger through them to discern a fair price, but noticed the slender finger of the waitress pressed into his palm. The comely waitress extended three fingers and slid a trio of gold crowns into her own hand. Fargus and Welby each groaned loudly at the 30% loss in revenue, but received a cross look from Lady Irena, who graciously thanked the red-headed waitress. Have a seat, she said. This will more than cover what you owe, but I'll get you some food and drink, as it is nearly dinner time, and it's the least I can do. The bartender finished picking up the last of the damaged items and flipped the sign on the door from closed to open, immediately bringing in a handful of rough-looking sailors who were immediately warned to mind their manners. The group was served quickly and discussed their past experiences, getting to know each other a little better. As the repast was finished, they returned to the discussion of throwing themselves onto the mercy of the guards. I still think it's a bad idea, said Welby O'Toole. I'm sure Johan's thugs are going to inflict more than enough punishment on that guy. Why should we take our lumps? The rest of the group piped up, explaining that freeing a prisoner from the stocks was not the right thing to do, no matter how much punishment he got. The halfling shook his head but conceded the point. As the tavern filled to capacity, the group thanked the waitress for her understanding and left the business. Moving down the muddy road, they passed a trio of animal handlers guiding a very tired and bloody ram down the road back to the docks. As the heroes reached the guard outpost, they noticed that the stocks again had a familiar resident. Kelsey? they exclaimed in unison. Looking closer, they recognized the man they had delivered to Johan was again in the custody of the guards. A pair of new guards approached the group and ascertained their attentions. Cabe, the bard, stepped up and inquired if this was indeed Kelsey. The guards confirmed the party's suspicion and announced that they were too late to grab their reward. Puzzled, Lady Irena asked the men-at-arms to expound upon that comment. One guard pointed out that Kelsey had magically escaped earlier, but was captured by Johann the Brewer, who received the 500 gold piece reward for the criminal's recapture. 500 gold pieces, the group exclaimed together, and the guards nodded and told them to back up as a fortified wagon had arrived. A quartet of guards came out of the building, and the six men cautiously removed the criminal from the stocks before rudely depositing him into the armored wagon destined to the Phoenix Gulag. The party stared in disbelief at what they had heard and huddled up as Kelsey was being unloaded. Did you hear that? Johan screwed us over, exclaimed the diminutive rogue. He probably knew there would be a big reward and sent us in to do the dirty work. I say we go kick his ass. The group discussed the turn of events and opted to refrain from turning themselves in. 
Sister Elaine pointed out that this was a fine how do you do, welcome to Phoenix rubes, and the others added to their dismay. After being in agreement, the group opted to leave as the guards finished up the transfer. Walking back down the muddy road, they pondered their choices. Sister Elaine stated she still needed to report to the church, and perhaps they should all find rooms for the night and let cooler heads prevail in the morning. Lady Irena nodded in agreement, as did Cabe the Bard. Fargus was undecided, and Welby repeated his opinion of the physical beatdown. Fargus thought for a moment and agreed with the halfling, causing consternation to the other three. But, added the fighter, we need to make a better plan than go into a stronghold and try and beat the hell out of him. I mean, did you see the size of his guards? Welby began to speak and bit his lip in agreement. Cabe and the pair of ladies, soothed by the change of heart, nodded their heads appreciatively. Come on, said Sister Elaine. I think there is an inn next to my church. As the sun began to set, the group trudged up the muddy hill to the high walls of Phoenix. Cabe looked back towards Dockside and saw several streetlights being lit by pitch dealers and gave out a big sigh. Some day, some day I'm going to be a big shot in this town. Mark my words. But as he turned, he noticed his new companions had not stopped and were several yards away from him. He hurried his pace and caught up to the group as they reached the southwest entrance. Several carts were backed up as the traffic was heavy and the group began to look around at all the people milling about. Guards walked the parapet, keeping a close eye on the events in and outside of the walls. After several minutes, the guards completed their check of the wagons and they were allowed to pass. A gauntlet of guards formed up with each, ins with each inspecting the adventurers. Lady Irena passed by one of the guards gave a whistle and a crude remark causing Fargus to step up to the man. You need to mind your manners, stated an angry Fargus. This caused a trio of guards to approach and investigate the pending problem. Tommy, you got a problem with this motley crew? remarked one of the guards. As the quartet of men stepped up to look Fargus into the chin, both Welby and Cabe flanked the large ranger and in a spirit of unity. Lady Elaine joined the men but stepped into the middle and exposed her clerical robes. The guards backed down and the priestess gave them a quick blessing. With the tension broken, the group crossed through the gates and into the busy plaza. Street vendors offering deals before finishing their day saw the group and accosted them until Lady Irena formed a fiery globe in her hand and the timid merchants fled. Looking around, Welby pointed in one direction and after a surprised whistle uttered Look at the size of that place! The adventurers followed the extended arm and were amazed at the sheer size of the structure. Sister Elaine smiled as she recognized the adornments. This is the chapel of our savior, Dilo. This is my destination. Look, over there is an inn. Let us get you guys some rooms. The PC smiled after a long day and headed into the tall establishment bearing the name Gateway Inn. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.